when scientists argue, the broader population wins. Strangely phrased sentence, but true as a general rule in scientific endeavors. In the field of paleoanthropology, the endeavor is finding out when modern humans everythinged, developed, migrated, left Africa, met archaic humans, reached this part of the world or that part of the world. It's all up for debate, or strongly worded scientific papers written between competing camps of thought at least. Traditional, or perhaps more precisely, previous hypotheses has the appearance of modern humans, Homo sapiens, at around 200,000 years ago in the eastern part of Africa, plus or minus 50,000 years. However, discoveries have muddled the already Stygian depths on this topic, and we might have H. sapiens ancestors much older and more widespread than that. Curious about how far back humans go in history? You can find your own personal hidden history with the help of our sponsor, MyHeritage.com. MyHeritage.com is a family tree-making, record-finding, relative-reaching, picture-colorizing, and DNA-analyzing machine. MyHeritage.com is Europe's number one family history service, and 90 million users trust it. If your memory of your aunt's second cousin's third daughter's name fails you, it's easy to search and match up records. With over 16 billion records, building your tree is easy and fun, and you start finding new relatives the deeper you go. We wanted to start tracking family of one of our writers back into the 1930s and before. Knowing about the lives of those that straddled the last century's turnover and their children that would have been born in the first decades of the 1900s would be illuminating, starting with the current generation and then moving back one step at a time. We were able to enhance pictures of where they lived and even colorize some of their contemporaries. It's as easy as uploading a photo and clicking a button. When researching family members, you literally have billions of files to pull from, old and recent. Filtering results is simple, with different fields to fill out. And of course, you can order DNA tests right from your family tree, giving you an even more in-depth look into your origins. Right now, MyHeritage.com is doing a 14-day free trial for the complete plan, and click the link in the description to get 50% discount after. So try it out, search around and back through time, and maybe you can get a real good glimpse of a day in your own history. If you ask a paleoanthropologist when they would estimate the first evidence of modern humans walking the Earth, specifically Africa, they would probably give you a number about 150 to 200,000 years ago. They would also say that we evolved in a certain location and spread out, relatively unchanged until we settled in the different geologic locations around the globe. This is the widely accepted dates for the onset of Homo sapiens, and the place of our origin is Ethiopia, or at least the area in Africa in which Ethiopia resides now. That is the cradle of our species, and from there we spread, eliminating or assimilating every other archaic human species as we went. If you have seen our other videos regarding humanity's origins and our near ancestors, and we suggest you do, they're pretty nifty, then you might remember that modern humans waited around a long time in Africa before heading beyond the continent. You start seeing H. sapiens remains in other parts of the world some 150,000 years ago, after the initial estimates of our timeline. The spread of modern humans throughout Europe, Asia, and even the islands of Oceania seem to happen within 10 to 20,000 years, a very fast diffusion compared to the 150 millennia it took to reach the ends of Africa. Of course, the fossil record will never be able to tell the whole story, and a large number of pauses could have been put on our original populations and their struggle for survival. This hypothesis is prevalent in the anthropological community, but there is competition. An established, if not extensive, theory states that humans didn't just appear in Ethiopia more or less fully developed, like the spawn point for the character creation in a game, but that all across Africa, variations were evolving with bits and pieces of what would come together as Homo sapiens. This would have to be predicated by a relatively close ancestor species, closer than either Neanderthals or Denisovans, having already spread across Africa. From them, we take the evolutionary half-steps into being anatomically modern humans and proceed to fight, hunt, negotiate, and promote genetic diversity throughout the world. This paraphrases the idea behind the multi-regionalism or mosaic evolution theory. The Irhoed Highlands this theory is interesting and gives a different interpretation to the beginnings of our species, but it was widely disregarded due to lack of supporting evidence. That was until specimens showed up in Jebel Irhoud, Morocco, that suggested a very early form of Homo sapiens was present. We say early form of Homo sapiens, but the fossils and similar ones in Floresbad, South Africa, aren't universally considered to be modern humans. Rather, they are that half step away, showing some signs of full modernity, but not all. 
and these fossils are some 350,000 years old, which almost doubles the age of the previous oldest fossils. This hominin would have probably interbred with the archaic human species already present, whether that was Neanderthals or other species. The Jebel Irhot site has an interesting recent history as well. Originally a mining site, some signs of ancient hominin occupation quickly had it become a dig site in the 1960s. The original research crew found several remains before shutting down the site. They never got quite enough evidence for a fully conclusive dating of the finds. Later, in 2004, a new excavation started, and more data was gathered allowing for the more accurate, older dating. The site contains numerous bits of evidence pointing to habitation by a relatively advanced hominin. There are animal remains from about 30 different species, which gave scientists a look into the local ecology from 350,000 years ago. There are stone tools and multiple human remains. A skull, a partial skull, a lower mandible, a humerus, and a hip bone were some of the discoveries. Creatively named Irhod 1 through 5 respectively, these remains give us an idea of what was the same and different between us and these ancestors. The archaic humans, and I knowingly use the term with reservation to future discoveries, would have similar faces to us. Very similar, one scientist said. They looked like people you would come across in your average day. These specific individual remains show a lack of prognathism, dental jargon for over or underbite. The skulls were a bit more elongated and less round than ours. There were also signs that some aspects of their physiology developed faster than us, such as the root of the teeth in the jaw. Oddly, it seems like the crown of the teeth developed slower than ours. The Florisbad skull shows similar features, enough that it's possible that they are of the same variation of human. These two finds are on the opposite ends of the continent, showing a large area of inhabitation. The ancient tools at Irhot were discovered next to fire pits and animal bones. The bones show signs of preparation and cooking, such as charring, tool notches, and marrow extraction. Some of the tools were under layers of charcoal in the fire pits. Dating of both the tools and the charcoal under and over them give us a pretty solid range for their age, further confirming the age of the human remains around them. The dating firmly puts the Jebel Irhot fossils as the oldest human remains found. Or it would if there was an agreement that the Jebel Irhot finds are actually modern humans. Partially persuaded, wholly unsure. Because of the difference between the Jebel Irhot remains and anatomically modern humans, some scientists say that they constitute a different species and not a variation of H. sapiens. There is also the lack of genomic evidence. When the team working on Jebel Irho tried to run DNA analysis, they weren't able to gather strong enough samples, and so were unable to do further research that would have given us a better idea of how these archaic hominins fit in our genealogy. The Florisbad skull, which has been around since 1935, was a more isolated find and got moved around the Homo species like a hot potato. It was considered as H. heidelbergensis, likened to H. sapiens and H. neanderthalensis. At two points after its discovery, it was given its own species as H. helmi, eventually being classified as possibly H. sapiens. The Jebel Irhot fossils and the Floris Bad skull finds both claim the other as partial proof of being H. sapiens, so the Mobius loop of logic there makes for a tricky foundation. The Far Past is a book we only get glimpses of, a phrase or two here and there. Never a full story, but so much to learn. Tracing our origins back farther and farther gives us that much more to find, that many more possibilities. Whether we grew from one area in Africa and spread out in an all-conquering wave, or if we had a whole continent to grow and change in before leaving, are ideas that could change what we think of as humanity. The anthropology community might go either way, but whatever results, we have more members to add to our own family tree. And the broader the base, the greater the tree. Thanks for checking out our new video. Please like and subscribe to A Day in History for more content about our near relatives and interesting topics. A quote to leave you with. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. Master Ugwe.